Before I start explaining DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation, I would like to tell you a story which I read recently in the media. The story was like this that it's a fact actually not a story that they have found that 70% of the people who win lottery commonly among common peoples they usually become bankrupt within a few years they become broke moneyless almost in debt and the reason they have found that these people they have a tendency to to spend money unusually inappropriately with some triggers in their life with their new uh, money and they usually become broke something similar not exactly similar but something similar which happens in dic also when i read this i it reminded me of the dic now dic what happens that your body's coagulation factors which are in normal amount suddenly becomes used up due inappropriately to form lot of blood clot or thrombi due to some triggers which i'll be discussing shortly and then you lose your all the clotting factors which are there all the platelets which are there to prevent your bleeding and suddenly you become broke without any platelet without any coagulation factor so you start to bleed so what is happening in dic dic is an interesting disorder dic is a paradoxical disorder where you are having two things together simultaneously one is bleeding another is thrombus formation blood clot formation we know that there are certain diseases which have bleeding only like hemophilia uh itp dic all the itp not dic itp or von willebrand disease similarly some diseases which are there there is a thrombus formation usually like deep venous thrombosis but dic is a disease which actually they are having both the things together so it's it's a thrombo hemorrhagic disorder this is the first very very important point that you need to understand about dic that means in dic what is happening thrombus or blood clot formation and bleeding which is happening together which is quite unusual and second interesting thing about the dic is that dic is never usually a primary disease it's always occurring due to something else like ards in the lungs so so dic is really a acquired coagulative disorder you can say acquired disorder it's not a primary disorder there is some diseases which would be behind that dic example it could be a cancer it could be infection like septicemia which is actually triggering obstetric complications which is triggering dic so dic uh, the main idea is this that something basically two things not something they are triggering the un- the activation of the clotting system coagulation system in your blood in the body inappropriately and they do it in two ways how they do it they usually do it by releasing tissue factors which can activate your coagulation factors or they can also do it by injuring your endothelium and this causes you can think by a pneumonic very popular or i thought it in this way actually coin c o i n that is called c for cancer o for obstetric complication i for infection and n for necrosis tissue necrosis so usually these four things usually results or culminates in the dic and what happens in this all these things they can cause dic by two ways either by releasing some pro coagulant tissue factors which actually stimulates or triggers your coagulation factors to make more blood clots inside your body or they can injure your endothelium again to stimulate excessive blood clot so the name itself tells you that as a result what happens that there is a disseminated intravascular coagulation as a result widespread there will be small small blood clots which is called micro thrombi technically small micro means small thrombi called clot they starts to develop inside your vasculature inside your blood vessels and when they do that obviously what results in that as your platelets or coagulation factor they are getting used up to form this small small clot which is unnecessarily formed obviously you start lacking the platelet you start lacking the coagulation factor which would stimulate bleeding now as the small clots form another thing actually happened secondarily that in this small blood vessel this blood clots which are there which is made by platelet and thrombi the rbc would be hit by them and rbc is passing through the small blood clots and they would be hemolyzed and that causes a particular type of anemia which is called microangiopathic hemolytic anemia micro means small angio means blood vessel pathic means pathological 
Why the small blood vessels are pathological? Because there is a clot formation inside. And as the RBCs are getting hit during while passing through the small blood vessels, they become hemolyzed, causing anemia. So it's called microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. So in DIC, you also see microangiopathic hemolytemia and the formation of the cystocytes, fragmented RBC as a result of that. Now, another thing starts beginning in the cases of DIC. What they start, that is when you have a lot of blood clots formation all over the body and you, are, you also start to bleed due to loose of platelets. Another thing is when it starts due to the formation of a lot of play, clots that is called fibrinolysis mechanism. Fibrinolysis mechanism is that there is a normal there in our body physiologically. Why? Because uh, we want to, to stop bleeding to some blood clot formation. But you don't want that clot become bigger, bigger, bigger with time to completely occlude the blood vessels unnecessarily. We want the blood clot only when there is a bleeding. To, to stop that, to stop making a very big clot unnecessarily, there is a procedure called fibrinolysis, which basically contributed by plasminogen, which becomes plasmin and through tissue plasminogen activator. You definitely have read in physiology. And that plasmin basically breaks this blood clot this fibrin into fibrin degradation products so as your body throughout the body there is a lot of blood clot formation these fibrin degradation products would start to form and particularly fibrin degradation products start to form which is called d dimer d dimer is basically due to breaking of the cross link fibrin that is very important this is not all d dimer are not all fibrin degradation products are d dimer d dimer is a specific kind of fibrin degradation product which is as a result of breakdown of the cross link fibrin that is the point and so obviously what would be happening in the result mostly in acute cases what we see that as this the patients the most important symptom which happens in acute cases is usually severe bleeding because all these blood clots are uh, using up these platelets and clotting factors and as they are forming this blood clot and clotting factors what is going to happen that your blood clo coagulation factor, your platelets would level, level would become down and you start to bleed from various sites. If you are, there could be a venipuncture site, it could be a various orifices from your side or from minor injury, you start to bleed. And also the small small microthrombi which are formed that can also cause this infarct in the various part of the body. Like in brain it can cause, sometimes in kidney it can cause cortical necrosis as a result of the DIC. This manifestations could occur. And all those fibrin degradation products which are formed, they can also inhibit your clotting pathways like clotting uh, thrombin and the clotting path platelet aggregation and that can also stimulate bleeding. So the net outcome in DIC what we see that the patient could have bleeding, patient could have microthrombi formation and the thrombi, thrombosis formation and the clotting formation, both the things are going simultaneously. So in a nut cell, what is happening in DIC that due to some reason, due to some causes, it could be a cancer, it could be a obstetric complication, it could be infection, it could be a extensive tissue necrosis, tissue trauma that is causing either release of some procoagulant factors, which is stimulating your clotting pathway, or they are basically causing the activation or injury to the endothelium and they are basically triggering your clotting pathways to become stimulated unnecessarily. As a result of this, what is going to happen that small, small blood clot, microthrombi, which is made of platelet and fibrin, they start to build up various part of the body. During the process of this formation of this microthrombi or small, small blood clot throughout your body vasculature, your platelets, your uh, clotting factors get used up. And that, that's why you start resulting in bleeding also. So one side there is a thrombus formation, microthrombi, another is bleeding. So that's why it's called thrombohemorrhagic disorder. At the same time, what is happening that as those blood clots are forming, this thrombus is forming, there is a fibrinolysis procedure, which is physiological, that is also normally seen also, that is also kicking in, that is also starting in. And that is resulting in fibrin degradation products, which is present in the patient in the DIC. So, and those fibrin degradation products are again going to inhibit the coagulation pathway to, to potentiate, to accelerate the bleeding. So bleeding occurs basically in DIC patients due to two reasons. One is due to lack of platelet, due to lack of clotting factor, plus those fibrin degradation products also inhibit the 
platelet aggregation inhibit thrombin which is also results in bleeding so these are the main two reasons and if you look at the diagnosis of dic diagnosis of dic what you are going to say it's very simple platelets are all getting used up to form those unnecessary clots so platelet count will be decreased all the clotting factors intrinsic pathway or extrinsic pathway both are getting used up in this condition so what is going to happen that you'll be having low, less pt a uh, prolonged pt abnormal pt prothrombin time which basically measures the extrinsic pathway and prolonged aptt also which measures the intrinsic pathway you'll be also having less of fibrinogen fibrinogen level will be down because fibrinogen is also getting used up to form those unnecessary blood clots plus you'll be having increase this fibrin degradation products particularly d dimer which is their level would be elevated because all those clots are also getting lysed so you'll be having low pt sorry you'll be having low platelet you'll be having increased prothrombin time you'll be having increased aptt you'll be having increased d dimer you'll be having decreased fibrinogen this will be the characteristic feature in this patient of the uh, dic so this is the basically the idea of the dic that you need to keep in mind in an answer thank you